Hello guys, this is Ola Yeni, Dear Kolola Daniels, popularly known as Dear Ko Spectre. And welcome to another episode of Dear Ko Talks Law. On today's episode of Dear Ko Talks Law, we are talking about the doctrine of privity of contract. Now, this is the first time I am talking about the doctrine of privity of contract. In my last series of episodes on contract law on my channel, I have discussed about law of offer, the one on acceptance, then consideration, and things like that. But I haven't spoken on the doctrine of privity. So this is going to be my first class. So I want to believe that anybody who is listening to this class, you are here either because you want to know more on the doctrine of privity of contract or because you have a contract law exam to write. If you have a contract law exam to write, I can assure you that this particular lecture that I'll be taking will be extremely simplified for you. All you just have to do is make sure that you are diligent with the lectures and listen from the beginning to the end of the lectures. I will have about 10 to 15 videos because I will be talking about this doctrine as well as the exceptions. There are numerous exceptions on this doctrine. So in as much as this particular class, I'll be talking about the introduction that's to the doctrine of privity. In my next class, I'll be talking about the evolution of the doctrine of privity the class after that I'll be talking about privity and consideration because they seem to be intertwined they seem to be together in the class after that I'll be talking about the Nigerian cases on the doctrine of privity do you understand so when we are talking about this doctrine I've told you this class is the best class for you all you just have to do is pay attention to the details which I will be giving in the class from the A to the Z the moment you can do that i can assure you that when you see this particular topic in exam you will definitely definitely kill it i'm very sure the lecturer will be like uh -uh, is he a professor that wrote this because i mean you are going to be on fire don't think that oh because i'm in year two there are so many things about law that you don't understand and therefore it's going to make it difficult this particular lecture is supposed to make it easy i'm going to make sure that i hold your hands of understanding and i walk you through the whole doctrine and at the end of the day you'll be glad that you watch this particular lecture so if this is your first time of coming to my channel i want to say a very big welcome to you please make sure that that you click the subscribe button and make sure that you click the notification bell so that anytime i release a video lecture like this which is going to be of interest to you you'll be one of the first set of people to watch this particular video don't forget to also share this video with your friends share this video with your friends and colleagues and any other person that you know would be in need of this particular lecture video and lastly don't forget to follow me on linkedin and on instagram thank you so much as you do so so now going straight into what we have for today we are talking about the doctrine of privity yeah i already said that earlier but this time around we are talking about the introduction this class we are discussing the introduction so i would not be talking about the cases and all that those will come in subsequent classes right now we need to understand the fundamentals one thing about law which you need to understand is that the moment you understand the element of a subject matter the subject matter in context now being privity the moment you understand the element the moment you understand the fundamentals see that particular subject matter or that topic can never be difficult to you again again so the question we need to ask in this introduction in relation to privity what is the element of privity what makes privity a problem how can i raise an issue of privity of contracts do you understand before we get confused let's go to the notes the way i teach i teach using my notes so let's go to the notes and let's start our lecture so now if a has a contract with b now following a breach by b if c institutes an action to enforce the contract against b it is fit and proper for b to question the capacity of c to sue him also before c institutes the action he must ask in what capacity he will be suing okay now that analogy may be somehow let me bring it home to an analogy that we might understand so let us talk about lassisi mr macaroni and tauma I'm 
conventional of us here we know who those people are so now this is it now let's see mr macaroni and tauma they are comedians in the nigerian entertainment space right now because they are comedians they are also friends so mr macaroni met lassisi and told lassisi ah uh, what's up now lassisi i want to give you hundred thousand naira, and i want you to you see that your land at banana island or that your land at uh, ikorodu or somewhere i want you to give that land to tauma are you listening to me listen to the analogy mr macaroni met lassisi and said lassisi i will give you hundred thousand naira and i want you in exchange of that hundred thousand naira to give your land to who to tauma now we then delve into the law of contract the first thing we need to ask has there been a contract that's the first thing is there a contract so now to answer the question of is there a contract has there been an offer yes mr macaroni said i will give you hundred thousand in exchange for what in exchange for you to give your land to tauma so yes there is offer has there been acceptance so far lassisi collected that hundred thousand naira from mr macaroni whether or not lassisi actually told mr macaroni i accept is inconsequential because by his conduct he has collected the hundred thousand naira and therefore has accepted the offer right so what is lassisi supposed to do lassisi is supposed to give that land to who to tauma abi now we have talked about what offer we have talked about acceptance and also for there to be a binding contract there has to be a third element what is that third element ladies and gentlemen the third element is consideration mr macaroni is furnishing consideration by passing hundred thousand naira across and also lassisi is furnishing consideration by passing the land across to tauma so therefore there is a binding contract so you see for every binding contracts that we have we must have offer acceptance and consideration there is a fourth element of intention to enter legal relations but it is assumed in this case or it is taken for granted in this case that, that they intended to enter into legal relations so let us leave that aside but we already have the three elements that we are talking about in the first place correct okay now this is where privity now comes in Privity now says that in the event that Lassisi does not pass that land across to Tauma, Lassisi does not give the land across to Tauma, what should happen? Now imagine that Lassisi could not give the land across to Tauma and Mr. Macaroni had died. Do you understand? Or Mr. Macaroni, due to some reason, will not be able to sue Lassisi to enforce the contract. The question is, can Tauma, can Tauma decide to enforce that contract by going to court? Note that Tauma is not a party to the contract. She is a third party. When I mean she's not a party to the contract, the first question you need to ask, did she make the offer? No. Okay, the next question you need to ask, did she accept the offer? No. Okay, the next question you need to ask, did she pass any consideration across? No. She didn't make the offer. She didn't accept the offer. She did not pass any consideration across. So, which means she is not a party to the contract. She is a third party. Listen to me. She is a third party to that contract. Although she has been mentioned in the contract, but she is not a binding party to the contract. When I mean binding party, a binding party must have fulfilled the three things. Offer, acceptance, consideration. So when you are talking about a binding party in context, Lassisi and Macaroni are the binding party. Taoma is a third party. So the essence of privity of contract is to ask, can a third party sue to get the benefit of the contract? Because of course, Mr. Macaroni passed that 100,000 naira across for the benefit of Tauma, right? So if it was for the benefit of Tauma and Lassisi, seeing that Mr. Macaroni has died, now do not want to pass that land across to Tauma, can Tauma sue to get the benefit of the contract which she was not a party to, which she did not make an offer to, which she did not accept, or which she did not furnish consideration for? Can she sue to get the benefit of that contract? That is our question. Can you see that privity is not so hard? the question is can she sue so let us continue with our notes to understand what i'm talking about now 
a third party right of action may be based on one or more of the common law exceptions so what i'm telling you now is that yes she can sue but she can sue based on number one the common law exceptions or number two one or more of the exception established under a special or general statute where one exists for example in england so there are under two areas where she can sue she can sue under the common law or she can sue under the statute but i don't want us to talk about the exceptions now i want us to talk about the rule the rule what is the rule the general rule the exceptions we'll talk about those ones in later class we have a lot of time but let us understand the general rule first now although the doctrine of privity of contract is well established some writers prefer the plain english title of third party rights you can see that i told you in my analogy that aoma is not what she's not a party to the contract why because she did not make offer accept or furnish consideration therefore cannot be said to be one of the two binding parties she's there for a what she's there for a third party and when we are talking about privity we are asking would the third party in context taoma would taoma who is the third party would she have a right to sue that's what we are talking about third party right which in latin is called jus quasitum tertio jus what quasitum you now in some literature the third party rights are actually referred to as strangers to the contract yes taoma is a stranger to the contract please why is taoma a stranger to the contract because taoma did not furnish consideration we are looking at contract what is a contract a contract must be between two people there must have been offer acceptance and consideration who are the people who made the offer acceptance and, and consideration we are talking about lasisi and mr macaroni can you see why taoma is a stranger now taoma has nothing totally nothing to do with the contract she has nothing to do with the offer she has nothing to do with the acceptance and therefore nothing to do with the consideration and would be regarded as a stranger to the contract do you understand what i'm saying so to continue with the note in some the kernel of the doctrine are uh, a third party cannot be subject to a burden of a contract to which is not a party and a person who is not a party to a contract cannot enforce the promise of the contract look at that again a person who is not a party cannot what enforce the promise of a contract which may be for his benefit now in discussing this doctrine focus should be on parties to the contract or contracts in order to isolate non-parties and b lessons from the error made by parties or third parties in the various cases where the action has failed usually a party who is in breach of a contract is seeking to deploy the doctrine as a defense to defeat the case notwithstanding its merits so what are we now saying here we are saying that you see this doctrine let me tell you why it is applied in court you might not have been taught this in class but let me tell you why it is applied in court so now you know that lasisi would have his lawyer taoma would have his lawyer who is sue is it lasisi or taoma obviously it's taoma why because it's taoma that wants something lasisi is trying to run away so lasisi cannot go to court abi now taoma is the one that wants to collect the land from lasisi and say that that land that is at ikorodu or at banana island that you promised under the contract that you made to mr Macaroni to give me oh yeah give me the land now and like she said ah, i don't know you waiting be this one i don't know you person where i know don't die and i person where i make contract with so please get out of here and then tauma is like no no do you understand and tauma then goes to court tauma carries a lawyer and then goes to court now tauma is the who tauma is the plaintiff in civil language is known as the plaintiff but anybody who institute an action in criminal court is known as the prosecution so tauma is what is the plaintiff or the claimant do you understand the plaintiff or the claimant so tauma gets into court and tauma is addressing my lord my lord there was a contract and i'm supposed to benefit from that contract although i am not a party to the contract i'm a third party but still i have benefit from the substance of the contract which i'm supposed to be accorded and then the other lawyer which is lasisi lasisi becomes the word the defendant the claimant is taoma lasisi is the defendant then lasisi will now stand up lasisi will now say my lord let us not even talk about the merits of the case whether or not i'm supposed to pass any land across to her my lord the real question here is who is taoma who is she to this contract to challenge me on this contract she has nothing to do with the contract my lord did she make the offer in relation to this contract no 
My lord, did she accept anything in relation to this contract? No. My lord, did she furnish any consideration in relation to this contract? No. So my lord, why exactly are we here based on an action instituted by somebody that did not do anything in relation to this contract except one thing to collect the benefit of a contract? You cannot collect the benefit of a contract that you have not at least furnished consideration, made an offer or accepted something. So, my lord, she is a total stranger. Now, this is still the cancel for Lassisi talking. She is a total stranger to this contract, my lord. So, my lord, therefore, this is a preliminary objection to strike out the matter. What will Lassisi's lawyer do before we get into the merit of the case? Whether or not, in fact, there is a land to be transferred or something. There is supposed to be a preliminary objection a preliminary objection that the other party has no standing in this case are you listening why does the other party have no standing she is not a party to the contract therefore she has no standing that is a preliminary objection that must first be trashed out so this doctrine that we are about to learn we usually be instituted at where the preliminary stages of a trial you institute this as a defense that is lassisi lassisi will say my lord we need to strike out this matter because the party who has instituted this matter has nothing to do with the contract she is not a party to the contract and therefore cannot reap any liability or benefit from the contract do you see how it works now so to understand what i'm saying again usually a party who is in breach of a contract is seeking to deploy that is lassisi Lassisi is in breach, Abi. Lassisi is the one that does not want to transfer the land to Tauma. So now, a party who is in breach of the contract, Lassisi, is seeking to deploy the doctrine as a defense to defeat the case, notwithstanding its merits. Lassisi is not looking at the merits. He's telling the court, my lord, don't look at the merits. Look at this preliminary objection from the head itself. This case cannot stand because the other party is not the right party before this court. Thus, where the defense is raised, note that the question is not on the merit or just of the matter a factor which accounts for the policy to the relaxation of the rule by establishing several exemptions to the rule so this is just what i need you to understand so when we are talking about the doctrine of privity how is it used in court it is used at the point where the person the other party who is the plaintiff institute an action and you as the defense a defense lawyer a sound defense lawyer in a civil matter of contract of this nature one of the first set of things that is supposed to do is you know file preliminary objections and privity of contract comes under one of those preliminary objections where you tell the other party that he is not the right person before the courts. Why is he not the right person? Because he's not a party before the courts. Why is he not a party? Because he did not make the offer, he did not make the acceptance or furnish any consideration. Do you do you get what I'm saying? Are you are you getting a clearer picture of how the court works? So, like I said earlier, when you are talking about privity of contract, we are talking about third party rights. Do third parties to a contract, people who were mainly mentioned but are not parties to the contract can they institute an action to get a benefit of the contract that is the question now what are the other rules in relation to privity this is just the introduction what are the other rules there is this rule of consideration and all that these are things that we'll discuss in the next class but in the next class we need to talk about the evolution of privity of contract and while we are discussing about this evolution there are two cases that are extremely important for us to look at we need to look at the case of price and easting and we need to look at the case of twiddle and atkinson price and easting and the case of twiddle and atkinson while we are looking at this case are we further but portrays this doctrine which i already stated in the introduction i will further portray the doctrine and show you how it works in real life cases after that we'll then talk about consideration and privity of contract but for my next class we are talking about the evolution i hope that you enjoyed this video thank you for watching to the end of the video please make sure that you share this video with your friends and colleagues and those people who you know are going to benefit from this video i will see you in my next class